I'm Anton from Isovalent, and I will talk about BPF static keys. So, static key API was uh, added to kernel long ago, like in 2009, and uh, it utilizes uh, a compiler feature called Task Go To, which lets inline assembly to jump to labels defined outside of this inline assembly uh, region. And uh, of course, we also need the possibility to patch uh, code uh, in a live system. And the, the original intent uh, for, for this feature was to use like seldomly used features, uh, like either debugging or optional features with zero cost. And uh, in this talk, I will show how to use this feature from the BPF. So the um, uh, static key interface in kernel is uh, really simple. We define a key, and it should be defined uh, during compilation. So th this is where the name static comes from, probably. In this case, uh, this key is uh, initialized to false, which means that it is disabled by default. And uh, we use it using a helper static branch unlikely, which means that it will be, for the most cases, disabled. So we prioritize the else branch, not the, um, uh, not the branch itself. In assembly, this looks like this. So, if we if the, if the key is disabled, we replace the jump by an op operation uh, and just fall through. And um, yeah, it it replaced by an op. So, if we enable the key, we replace it by jump. It jumps to our branch and then uh, follows to the else branch or um, and uh, the, the goal is to use uh, the same, uh, basically the same API from BPF. So here we have uh, a program which uses a static key debug key, which we define later. And um, let's take a look at how this should like lo look like an assembly in BPF. So the NOP operation in BPF is just go to the next instruction. And um, this key is uh, unlikely. Uh, and uh, the key is off, so we just fall through to the uh, default branch. If we enable this key, we replace it by jump, and it jumps. We get our print K and jump back. And uh, of course, we, we also can have a likely uh, case, it means that we want to prioritize the branch itself. And uh, yeah, likely. And in assembly, this looks like that if the key is disabled, we do a jump. And if the key is enabled, we do not do a jump. So to summarize this, uh, to provide this functionality to the BPF, we need to provide these helpers, which should compile to this assembly. And then uh, we need to extend BPF API with uh, two different kinds of branches. So like normal branch and inverse branch, the normal one is off when the key is off and on when the key is on. And the inverse branch is uh, uh, on when the key is off. And, uh, Vice versa. So the, the solution is basically the same. We will just use awesome go to define somewhere like in libbpf, and uh, we extend BPF API with the ability to uh, to, to pass a list of uh, static branches to toggle and uh, controls to to actually toggle the branches. So the, this looks like this. So on the left, we have this awesome go to thing. And on the right, we have the code, which was compiled by using this uh, definition. 
And uh, besides compiling this code, we need to provide some additional formation to be able to uh, patch this code. And this is the following thing. So we, of course, first need uh, the set of uh, instruction to patch. We need the jump target to where will we jump when we patch instruction on and off. And also a third thing here is that uh, we need to actually uh, point to the actual static key which will be used to toggle this branch on or off. And in this case, uh, yeah, no surprise, the static key is a map. Uh, so like uh, static key is just a variable somewhere mm, and uh, a global variable in BPF typically represented by an array of size one. And the only difference is that we pass BPF of static key plug here. Um, so to, when we have uh, this uh, uh, static key and we have uh, the, the system go to, we can pass this information to kernel. We do this uh, exactly as uh, like with the minimal amount of information we need. It's pointer to a map, it's uh, instruction of set to patch, it's target of set where to jump, and flags, which is currently just uh, like normal branch or inverse branch. We probably can do something else later. The, um, to load it, we just, also it's pretty simple, we just take an array of these branches and do it during program load. And of course, uh, if we uh, use this macros defined, like which I showed before, then libbpf will take all, all this uh, information from jump section, will go to relocations to resolve the map pointers, and will construct this array and pass it to kernel. And uh, the, the, the natural thing to toggle this key on and off is to write zero, one inside map or like zero, non-zero. And uh, what, what, what's happening when we write one, like here we have a static key X. It is used for multiple programs. Uh, this topmost program has some static branches. Two of them are controlled by the static key X. One of them is normal, another one is inverse. So when we write one to the map, the first one normal instruction is replaced by jump and the inverse one is replaced by knob. And uh, when we write zero, uh, the upper side things, thing happens, we write knob to a normal instruction and jump to an inverse one. And uh, another thing is that um, we only let to update maps from uh, user space because otherwise a program can just get a pointer to map, toggle the variable voila, and we will not see this. Uh, so we need to prevent programs from accessing static key maps as normal array maps. And uh, I choose just to reject programs which try to use this map altogether. There was uh, another option to let programs to to use this maps read only and um, there, there is currently a way to to kind of do this but it, it actually has different semantics so it's probably should be called something like bpf uh, const uh, map uh, because uh, like it's it's not read only in in this semantics we only use it for frozen maps, which means that uh, user space initializes a map and then calls uh, map freeze. And uh, the map uh, from this point can be considered just uh, as a set of constants. And this doesn't work for static key, which we toggle. And like another thing is that uh, like normally BPF programs sh like are not interested in the value of the static key. They just have this branch instructions, which you toggle on and off, and, and that's it. So if if it will be needed to actually access BPF key values 
And if you have static key values from programs, we can add either slightly change the semantics of this BPFF read-only prog uh, flag, uh, or to add something like different uh, kind of pointer, uh, const pointer to map value or something like this. But I'm, I'm not sure if it's needed at all. So next, let's look at uh, like in a, just a few details how uh, what, what happens to the branch when we upload it during the pro prog load. First, we take an array uh, of the static instructions. Just consider one instruction, uh, one one branch. Then we translate it to map pointers from map file descriptors and uh, initialize the progaux used maps, which normally was empty. Then we pass it to verifier in the nf used maps, which also previously was empty, but now it's not. And uh, then after verification, verifier pushes us back. And another thing is that uh, some instructions in BPF are uh, patched like in the, in the original BPF, not jitted. They're patched uh with a set of instructions for example here we take a uh, call to bpf gifis and replace it just by uh, uh the reference and the address of gifis and again like map lookups do the same so when we do this uh the program changes size so we need to update all the branches which are affected and it's not a big deal so Verification was actually pretty straightforward. So the jump absolute instruction in PF uh, from like flow point of view, it's pretty simple. It's just like an edge and graph. And uh, we replace it by just two edges and graph. So when we go through the uh, graph of program, we jump to two places, not one. It's just like um when we execute a program we also like first jump to the next instruction and push the state to stack so re really it it seems pretty simple no one yet reviewed this patch but <laughs> and yeah that's it How does this affect the uh, JIT generated code? Uh, we, we need to patch uh, JIT for every architecture to provide this functionality. Uh, I mean, um, the, the JIT gener generated code looks exactly as it looks in kernel. So, one, one of the first slides, right? So, the, the JIT code will be looking like this. We replace the knob by jump and jump by knob. The the, the like the jump in uh, BPF code and jump in jitted code, they're one by one. So they jump jump absolute. So the, it's just one one by one translation. Now, do you expect you know? Because the the other alternative is to is to what you know it's when you do the JIT generation because you with with jitter code you have the option of of re, of uh, recompiling you know of of, re, of retranslating so it's a little bit kind of odd to um, you know to apply like code patching to code that has you know been you know code that's generated through a JIT where you could benefit from is where you could benefit from things like dead code and elimination and so on. Yeah, like I mean in my test I didn't see an example where like absolute jump will be eliminated. Like what? What an example of 
absolute jump, like J, J eliminated in JIT? I mean, the, the most common use of static, for, of static keys is you go down one branch, you know, you, you have, you know, you go down one branch or another with, of, out of, you know, different, different set of codes. Um, a, you know, a diamond, a diamond control flow. Um, and it's very, you know, it, it's very simple to, to just, okay, you're gonna, in, in, a, in a jet, you just delete, completely delete the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, excuse me, when we um, jit in code, um, we, we can keep track of the static branches, uh, like when we jit in an instruction, we know the original offset of the corresponding BPF code. So we actually know if this jump is like a static key or not. I, I, I understand, but it's, you, you are carrying, you know, you, you, are, you are carrying all the overhead of having to have both, both branches present and, uh, you know, register allocation valid for them and so on and so forth. So that's why yeah I'm but this is like what i want actually <laughs> okay why hmm? why uh, again like it's uh, the the same use cases as uh, in kernel i want to have for example tracing like advanced tracing like i don't know static trains point trace points for bpf programs or i want to enable disable feature which i do not use always like one example would be for example packet recorder when we have like some uh, non like uh, but but the the, dif the difference here is that is that um when you when you're doing you know in in the kernel we don't have we don't have the option of retranslating the code Where, whereas you know with a jit you do have the option of translate of retranslating the code How often are you expecting these these uh, these to change on you? I'm not sure if I understand the question exactly. So, how often are you expecting the static keys to change at runtime? It's. Uh... De depending on the use case, right? It can be, for example, like with packet recorder, yes, we can have a signal to record all the traffic for one second, for example, if we have something happening. So it can be just a runtime thing and uh, like alternative is to recompile the BPF program or attach it. And this is what we do not really like to do. <laughs> So how how often are you talking milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours? No, I, I can imagine milliseconds uh, for like if you if you have uh, just not not trace, not debug, but something trace and debug as well for for some operations. Uh, I, I think about uh, use cases when it is like milliseconds to seconds, and it can be hours as well. But yeah. It also um, for the for the sake of like recompiling versus static keys, it has a benefit that the verifier will not reject our program, which can happen. We have to support like multiple kernels, and we have sometimes cases when we enable something and pro program is rejected, everything breaks, and customers uh, blame us. Right. So if my program is already verified. Uh, then I don't have this problem. I just enable feature, disable feature, and it definitely works. So uh, when you have multiple uh, BPF static branch conditions in your program, like how, like if, if you have multiple points in the program where you are having branch conditions on the st same static key, uh, then if you change it, will that be atomic or you do patch one, jump one knob at a time? Yes. So it would so, be that um, some of them Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, good question. Like we, we have an alternative, right? We, we either can patch instruction by instruction mm -hmm. and um, either we can take a BPF program, take uh, make a copy, replace instructions, yeah, replace yeah. the program. 
And uh, I think in kernel, uh, the semantics is that one would also do it like branch by branch. Yeah. Um, and uh, so uh, both both cases are possible. Probably it can be uh, again. If someone uh, wants it to be atomic, then yeah. I mean, we, we can we can add a flag to to do this or this. So yeah, for verification, it is simpler to think that they are independent. So we just uh -huh. do like both jumps. Uh -huh. uh, in every static branch. Right, right, right. If we say that we keep, uh, we replace uh, the whole program atomically, it is harder to verify uh, because uh, on the first encounter of the branch, we need to save the state. And then on every other occurrence of this branch in this verifier path, we need to have the same state. I mean, it's not not complex, but it's it's. But, but you can do different. it uh, like on the page that has been generated after JIT, right? You can just replace the x86 uh, like the x86 code. You can generate a new one, copy it, and replace the knobs. Generate a new page and replace whatever the BPF prog is pointing to. Do something like that instead of having to go back to the verifier. Mm. Like you have a program text, right? Uh, the x86 code, and then like copy it, change the all the knobs corresponding to us. But uh, if if we have multiple pages, I mean, the, a prepare program can be executed at this time, right? So if we yeah, if, so that if, is why you first create a copy, then you modify it separately. Like you, it's not visible right now. The copy. Uh, yeah, is yeah, not, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you use the RCU synchronize RCU. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the second question is that where have you used this, and what kind of performance improvements do you see? Like, what is the uh, I didn't do performance uh, benchmarks this okay. time because uh, so in the original static key document, uh, there is performance. Yeah. Uh, and uh, basically, we just bypass one jump, right? Mm -hmm. But b besides uh, performance, which is uh, like it is uh, like valuable feature, of course, and we really want to have zero performance if like in case for tracing, for example. But uh, the other benefit, as I said, is that we really don't want to recompile programs. So mm -hmm. I want to have like the, the whole code available and verified and I like, want to toggle features inside it. Um, you mean like you set the static key before the program is verified or after that? Uh, after that, right? What after, do you mean? It's, after it's verified. So we uh, the, the static key is a map and uh, it can be used from different programs. In I case for, for tracing, for example, I want to use the same key from different programs. So I enable or disable the trace at I the see. same time. I see. And uh, when and you load them, it just uh, uses uh, the same procedure as if we update the map. I so see. it goes to map, takes mutex, and uh, updates the its value. And that's it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, in, in the original API, we have uh, defined static key true, defined static key false. And in BPF semantics, it's just value of map. We create a map, we assign it 0, 1. And then load programs, and they just pick this one. So you can have multiple programs which use a static key, share a static key map. Yes, yes. I see. Okay, thanks. Why do you even need all this infrastructure? Can you do this automatically for like if you have an array map and it's a simple value, you just do this likely, unlikely, or you unroll all the ifs automatically behind the scenes without any helpers without any flag yeah yeah i think uh, in the original static key document it shows that if you just go to take this uh, so leave this branch uh, in code uh, it generates something like 20 or 12 percent more branch mispredictions so <laughs> and this is for every branch right Again, like memory reference, right? If you have like uh, f fast path, you don't want to do an extra memory for a global flag. No, no, no. What I mean is like you, when, when you see in the JIT that you can do it, essentially if, if the map is an array and the value is an int, you automatically enroll this branch, right? And you... But how you toggle it uh, when the program is already existing, like after we JITed it? 
I, I want to toggle I with guess the... you update the map value from the system call and then at this point you know that oh I have actually enrolled some of the branches let me regenerate widget the program and, and this is what we do here right but you're adding extra annotations right you're saying oh this is the place this is for example why do you even need those like helpers the static branch likely right that's if you remove the help because I don't want this map to be accessed uh, from like by normal programs why why is it a problem if someone accesses it? Uh, imagine that program takes uh, uh, so normally it's, we don't care too much because like if we control it from user space we just write zero one but then uh, if we allow programs to read this value we want it to be consistent and if a program for example says I don't know I take the pointer to this value and then it sets it to one and uh, other programs think that it is enabled, but it's not. So it's it's just, right, so I guess you basically... we actually do not use it anywhere from the BPF program. So it, we, can, we can just use a normal map probably, but uh, yeah, it's right, it's you not. Need, you basically need a flag to enforce that on the BPF side, you don't read and write it, right? Yeah, yeah, th this is why I said that we can like, either treat this like BPF read only prog flag differently or introduce something like okay, different kind of pointer to map voila. Okay, thank you.